Hey gang, James again with TFB TV, and today we are talking the top five most overrated handguns. All right, let's lay down a few ground rules. This is gonna be make and model only. You guys may remember the top five most overrated CCW videos I did a few months back, and the 1911 was number one in that video. The 1911 generally, not a specific 1911, just the 1911. Now, we're doing make and model only for this list, so the 1911's not gonna be on it as much as I would love to fill this list full of number one, 1911, number two, 1911, number three, just five random ass 1911s. I'd love to do that and make that the most overrated list, but that's not what I'm gonna do this time. Another gun you're not gonna see in this list today is Glock, because when 75% of the world's police forces use your gun and you still sell it for under 500 bucks, I'm pretty sure you're not overrated. Now, I can already hear you guys saying there, Here's James again, Glock fanboy. Well, cut me some slack here, buttholes, because remember, on the top five most overrated CCWs video, I did put the Glock 19, I think at number three, because it's pitched as a compact gun, but come on, let's be honest, it's a duty size gun. But there is going to be at least one polymer gun on this list, and that is number five, the H&K USP. Guys, can you tell me? Can you tell me what the H&K USP does that the Glock or any other quality polymer pistol doesn't do in the market today. The USP costs like 800 freaking dollars. It's huge, it's hard to find. They don't make a lot of parts for it. Do they even use a rail on the dust cover for it now or is it still that bullshit H&K proprietary slot rail thingy? I, I don't know. But for some reason HK is still making them which means for some reason you people are still buying them. What do they do better than anything else? Anybody, can anyone tell me? Uh, what, what's that, thumb safety? Oh yeah, you can get a thumb safety on your $800 polymer gun. You can also get a thumb safety on the Smith & Wesson M&P series of pistols, which cost about half as much, but perform just as well. And that really raises the question, why do you even need a safety on a gun that has a trigger that feels like you're squeezing a condom full of broken glass? I don't know. Okay, anything else that the USP does that the Glock doesn't? Oh, oh, it's got a hammer. Uh, you don't need a hammer. Well, actually, maybe you do need a hammer, but that's a craftsman to bash yourself in the face with if you thought a hammer was important and you bought the H&K USP instead of the SIG Pro. Now, moving on to number four. Guys, I know I'm gonna catch some heat for this one, but I, I just have to ask, am, am I taking crazy pills? Why are people still buying the CZ75? It's heavy as hell, it's all steel, the fit and finish isn't that great. I, I think the finish on it is it's not like Tenefer, it's not like Sig's Nitron or the Melanite that Smith & Wesson uses. It's like black latex house paint. And guys, look at that cute little fella. Check out that tiny little ejection port. Maybe that's part of the reason why the CZ75 isn't on par with, say, Glock, Smith & Wesson, even the HK USP in terms of reliability. It's huge, it's got a mediocre trigger, it's got the slide and frame design that makes the actual grippable area of the slide thinner than your Tinder match list. And best of all, this gun costs like 600 bucks street price. And the worst part about it is you have gun hipsters everywhere complaining that the CZ75 is underrated. It's not underrated, guys. It's just unpopular for all the reasons I mentioned. All right, we are blowing through this list, guys. We're already at number three, but it doesn't really count because this actually isn't a handgun. I think it's an elaborate Rube Goldberg machine, and that is the H&K P7. What do you need a piston in a handgun, a nine millimeter handgun for? There have been guns prior to the H&K P7, nine millimeter semi-automatics after the H&K P7 that have all functioned perfectly well without the H&K P7's delayed locking system using a gas piston. The only thing the gas piston's good for is making the dust cover scorchingly hot after you fire two rounds, making the gun uncomfortable to hold. And guys, can we talk about the squeeze cocking system? Talk about overcomplicating the gun just to add very little tangible benefit. I don't understand why H&K couldn't take a cue from the other two guns that were part of the Munich trio. That is the Walther P5 and the Sig P6, which were both hammer-fired guns. If you want a pre-cocking system, just use a hammer. But that's the problem here, guys. These guns are over-engineered, overweight, overpriced, and under capacity. You're talking about a gun that weighs 30 ounces. It weighs 50% more than the Smith & Wesson Shield, but they both hold eight rounds. And for that matter, you can buy four or five Smith & Wesson Shields 
for the price of an H&K P7. And fellas, you can't even change the barrel yourself. Maybe you could if you're an H&K armorer and you have all the tools at your house. But other than that, it's not a simple pop-in, pop-out affair like it is with every other popular semi-automatic 9mm. And it's very telling that H&K gave up on the P7 after only 29 years of production. We're talking H&K, the company that still manufactures the totally irrelevant H&K USP, throwing in the towel on the P7 after 29 years. They may as well have come out and said, this gun was a mistake. Guys, I had an H&K P7. I thought it was pretty cool, but at the end of the day, I realized it's a little bit like my Wes Anderson coffee book. It's big, it's pointless, the only reason you have it is to show people how cool you are when you're actually really a pretentious asshole. Anyways, H&K P7, number three. Sorry, H&K, doubling down on you guys today. Moving on to number two, number two, the Taurus fuck judge. Holy shit, don't get me started on this gun. You guys, TFB TV viewers, you guys are a bunch of smart guys. I know that you know better than to own a Taurus judge. For those of you who've never heard of the Taurus Judge, the Taurus Judge is a five-shot revolver that shoots either 45 Long Colt or 410 shotgun shells. Because of that latter fact, this thing's like a redneck boner machine. Hicks absolutely love shooting 410 shotgun shells out of their revolver, and I don't know why. Really, the Taurus Judge kind of embodies the spirit of just because you can doesn't mean you should. Let me ask you, what does a 410 shotgun shell do that, say, 45 Long Colt or 44 Magnum or 44 Special, anything comparable that it doesn't do? And the answer is nothing. Some guys like to justify it as a snake gun. Now, I know you guys that are saying it's a snake gun, if you're out there, um, bullshit. You guys know you're just buying it because it can shoot 410 shotgun shells. And I'm okay with that, as long as you can just admit it. It's not a better snake gun than, say, a 45 Long Colt, 44 Magnum, 44 Special loaded with rat shot. Okay, what about the slugs, 410 slugs? Well, if you look at the ballistics, a 410 slug does not outperform the 45 Long Colt, and they could be more expensive than 45 Long Colt anyways. So what does that leave? That leaves buckshot. So with buckshot, even if it hypothetically worked, and I'll get to that in a second, even if it hypothetically worked, you're talking three, maybe four soft underperforming lead pellets coming out of what, like a three or four inch barrel. But to make it even more pointless, if you can imagine, it turns out that all the shot behind the lead shot since they're all moving in a linear path in the same direction, down the same barrel in a single file line, the shots in the back actually get smushed, and by the time they come out of the muzzle, they're flatter than your high school girlfriend. I guess having a revolver that can shoot 410 shotgun shells is a little bit like putting a steam engine in my truck. Is it kind of cool? I guess. But is it totally worthless and at best redundant? Absolutely. The Taurus Judge was a strong, strong contender for the number one spot, but there is one gun that is more overrated than the Taurus Judge. That gun is the Walther PPK. I think the Walther PPK is one of the most gorgeous guns ever made. I had the PPK because I had just gotten my concealed weapons permit. I was a huge Bond fan, and I wanted something like a, a tuxedo gun, what my buddies called a tuxedo gun, something where you, when you dress up, you got a nice looking gun to go with you, not your rugged, plain Jane Glock. But then I realized the only time I actually wore a tuxedo was at fraternity formal where I'd get blackout drunk on Jaeger, scare off my date, throw up on my jacket, and then have to fight the next day with a tux rental place about getting my deposit back. So if I wasn't gonna carry it, then what did I have? Well, I had a heavy, expensive, uncomfortable to shoot gun in the smallest possible defensive caliber. Parts are expensive, mags are expensive. It's got really snappy recoil. It's got really shitty ergonomics. It doesn't even have an external slide lock. The magazine release is in kind of a crappy location. And I wanna keep going, but it turns out I read this article about four or five years ago in all places in the Washington Post, written by a novelist, a Pulitzer winning novelist named Stephen Hunter. And he described the Walther PPK as sleek, but basically useless. 
and I think maybe that's a little extreme, but I agree with the spirit of it. But in any case, this article, the closing paragraph of this article, I'm going to read to you verbatim because I can't say it better myself. The PPK's tragic flaw is that when it was designed, Streamline was the hot lick, but nobody had heard of ergonomics. Men adjusted to machines, not the other way around. And though it looks sleek, its edges are all razor sharp, while the trigger pull is like dragging a 75-pound rake over gravel. When you finally get the 10-pound lever far enough back to fire, the pip squeak jumps like a snapping mousetrap as it recoils, the slide shooting back in super time, then forward again as all those edges cut into your flesh. Shoot a box of ammo and your hand looks as though it's been put through a meat grinder. You probably haven't hit anything either because the sights are tiny and the barrel short. So the gun, like the man, is an illusion. Its reality is pointless. Bond never had to aim, had hands made of asbestos, and never missed. So guys, that is why the Walther PPK is the number one most overrated pistol in the world. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that list. You all have a great sense of humor about these salty, bitter lists. Uh, as I said, I've owned four out of these five guns. Of course, I wouldn't own that stupid bullshit Taurus Judge, but I've, I've owned all the other guns on the list. I think they're all fantastic. They're good guns. But really, when I'm thinking about a list of the top five most overrated guns on the face of the earth, those five are the ones that come to mind. So thank you for humoring me. Thank you as usual for watching. Thank you to subscribers, Patreon supporters, our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Proxybid. And I will see you guys next week.